Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our video on Cisco Firepower integration in ACI Fabric. In this video we're going to discuss a special uh, go-through service graph uh, for our next-gen IPS with bypass to layer 1 capability. My name is Goran and I'm part of Cisco Security and the Technical Marketing Team. Quick agenda, we're gonna discuss uh, bypass capable NGIPS appliances. Uh, then we'll go over the ACI go through on managed service graph uh, and some special settings that you need for it uh, to enable bypass to layer one. Uh, then we're going to switch to a demo of configuring that service graph in ACI fabric and going over the firepower setup. And we'll conclude by engaging that bypass. Uh, through reboot of the NGIPS sensor. Cisco has uh, uh, two types of appliances that can uh, impose next generation IPS capability. On the left are the brand new appliances, the Firepower 9300 and 4100. Uh, they are Cisco next generation firewall that has IPS only ports capability and they have special on the bottom there you see network modules that are called fail to wire uh, at 1 10 and 40 gig capability on the right we have our source fire acquired uh, firepower 8k and 7k appliances that run only as ngips and on the bottom they actually have built-in uh, ports that are capable of bypass they're called fail open and also at 1 10 and 40 gig capability our Unified Manager Firepower Management Center can manage our Firepower Next Generation Firewall Appliances, the 4100 and 9300, as well as our Next Gen IPS, the Firepower 7K and 8K hardware. It can also manage the embedded Firepower services in ASA, as well as the virtual variants of the Next Gen IPS and Next Gen Firewall. Now let's switch gears to our ACI service graph. In ACI Fabric you can set up a go through which is a layer 2 insertion of our service. Uh, in this case uh, next gen IPS that is capable of bypass and in this case our service graph um, actually takes our physical device uh, with consumer side and provider sides of the terminals, the physical cables being plugged into two different switches in this case. So you can see that uh, switch on the left, the LEAF 101, um, has our consumer side interface and switch 102, LEAF on the right, has the same uh, 1 slash 5 uh, interface on the right. In this case, to enable bypass, we have to configure a special feature that is a uh, per port significant VLAN feature that allows us to take that same VLAN 1001 from the consumer and provider side. That VLAN not changing enables us to bypass the traffic without any changes. So that is our go through service graph uh, which goes between the two BDs in this case the web and app BD and for service graph to work properly we have to enable flooding for that BD and also very important uh, to disable loop detection um, in uh, in this actually uh, physical domain where the firepower and GIPS resides. Commonly our insertion of layer 2 appliances allows us to uh, secure the workload that you see on the bottom here between um, the gateway um, and the workload itself. In this case uh, we are looking at changing the VLANs between VLAN 10 and 20 but uh, we can also with bypass enable that to be between two same VLANs. Uh, in the ACI fabric we can uh, insert this same topology by defining the north and south EPGs for this case the database workload and also assign the two bridge domains, BD1 and 2. Um, we do have an SVI defined in north, uh, you know, BD2. Uh, that 
pretty much gives us that ability to cut in with our IPS or um, uh, firewall device, whether it's transparent firewall or IPS, it's the same topology, and uh, basically secure that workload uh, as it traverses the firewall or IPS to its gate gateway. Uh, in this case, that gateway is the SVI in the um, AnyCast gateway on the Nexus 9000 uh, fabric. Just to quickly touch up on the configuration on the FMC, uh, we have our two ports that are bypass pair. Uh, we assign them to their own security zones, which end up being part of the policy, and they uh, are connected together or cross connected through an inline set. Uh, here you can see the settings for that inline set where bypass is enabled and they're set up to uh, communicate. Um, bypass is only available on hardware appliances um, as it requires those special NICs we discussed. Uh, the virtual appliances do not support bypass um, uh, because uh, in this case the VLAN does not change. Um, and they don't have uh, basically the wires or the special mix there. So non-bypass is of course available on both hardware and virtual appliances. So in our demo what we have is two EPGs, web and app. In web EPG we do have an SVI um, that is uh, defined within that bridge domain web uh, and we have our NGIPS device inserted through a go through service graph unmanaged between the web and app uh, uh, workload in this case. FMC is managing and pushing all the configuration to that sensor. So let's now switch gears into the demo itself. So here in this tenant, I do have three EPGs defined. We are going to be focusing on web and app EPGs. So here under layer 4 through 7 devices, I have my unmanaged uh, Firepower 7010 as an IPS device physical go through. And I have its two interfaces uh, defined to be plugging into the Ethernet 1.5 in two different leaves, as you can see. Um, and I'm defining the same in cap here. Uh, one of the important items here is to look at the, the VLAN pool for that physical domain. So if I take a quick look at that uh, physical domain and the VLAN pool here, I am able to assign static allocation VLAN range and I'm using a VLAN out of that static allocation um, to ac accomplish my service graph. So here now we're going to go to create a service graph. We're going to simply drag that device, um, name it bypass IPS, next generation IPS. And at this point, since I have an SVI in my uh, web EPG, that unicast route will remain true for the connector one but uh, for for the app connector I need to disable that to make this uh, service graph uh, properly configured so at this point I can proceed to apply the service graph and create the contract between web and app EPGs and here just assign the cluster interfaces to match their bridge domains. So before I put that in place, let me show you here, I have my terminals open to web and app Linux machines. And if I try to ping, um, I don't have an answer here. And here's my iperf as well. I'm not seeing an answer here. So what I'm gonna do, is I will finish that service graph real quick and just immediately see that my ping is starting to work and my UDP is actually making it through from web into app. At the same time, I'm gonna create an SSH connection here. Um, 
which is going through my IPS um, and at that point basically there is a contract in place web to app that has uh, this service graph we just defined uh, attached to it uh, if we switch gears and look at the FMC this is my uh, 7010 sensor that I have applied uh, in place we can take a look at its configuration here we have two ports enabled for bypass assigned to different security zones and their own inline IPS if I look at the configuration of that IPS bypass I see bypass is enabled and I have them the two ports added in uh, if we quickly look at the policy that applies to those security zones um, we see the security zones in both uh, source and destination and these are the protocols that are allowed to come through since I just opened those connections I can look at the events and see what communication I'm allowing to come through and I see my SSH, uh, my UDP, iPerf and ICMP actually show up there so at this point I am uh, ready to engage my bypass and to accomplish that we'll simply reboot the sensor itself so here I'm using uh, this sensor 2 the interfaces are up and running and under device tab I can actually reload it and at this point we can watch when um, the bypass engages so here we're watching for communication to stop and I think I am just uh, at this moment it has stopped um, I'm waiting for my TCP to recover my TCP has recovered um, and I can actually stop um, and count here how many pings we had actually lost so from 176 to 183 we lost about uh, seven pings and here in terms of UDP we roughly lost about um, uh, seven seconds worth of UDP communication and my TCP session had actually stayed up and running so at this point I can come back to my sensor and um, if you see here the interfaces themselves are um, not uh, they have the little uh, red mark uh, there is bypass enabled because the sensor software is not up and running it's actually rebooting now so once it comes up it'll basically resume to do the inspection itself so that is our demo of the bypass and one last thing that I wanted to show here is how we actually set up some of the uh, loop detection in this case um, here under interface policies um, I do have my firepower group um, policy group and here we actually had disabled CDP LLDP this is our layer 2 interface policy where we have that uh, uh, per port significant VLAN this is our um, entity profile so if I take a quick look here I have a port local scope um, for this uh, layer 2 interface policy that's applied to the firepower um, policy group itself hope you enjoyed this demo and learn how to integrate Firepower with Bypass into ACI Fabric. And I thank you for watching this video.